Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Helena. I'm from the Irish Heart Foundation. Absolutely delighted to be here tonight to have the chance to talk to you all. Um, it's hard to know how to follow up to all those speakers. It was just so interesting and valuable, all that information we had, but I'll try. Um, and I suppose the Irish Heart Foundation message that we wanted to send out to everyone tonight is that people who have uh, been worried about having a stroke or have had a stroke are not alone, that there are support there for people who have had a stroke and are caring for someone with a stroke. Um, and we've run a number of services um, that I'm going to go into detail about now. Um, so first of all, just to give us a bit of background, we are the national charity fighting stroke and heart disease. We're 90% funded by public and corporate donations, thanks to everybody who supports us. Um, our mission is to make the preventable death and disability from heart disease and stroke a thing of the past. Um, and often people wonder, you're the Irish Heart Foundation, how come you are also the National Stroke Charity? Um, well, as has been explained really well tonight, is um, strokes are caused through blockages in the blood vessels. Um, and so, therefore, because stroke is a cardiovascular disease, um, it comes under the Irish Heart Foundation's remit. Um, so that is why it is one of our priorities. Um, as has been spoken about, um, by a number of speakers today, um, we have improved a lot on stroke um, over the last number of years. Um, I suppose the Irish Heart Foundation um, really wanted to um, improve, I suppose, the services for stroke in Ireland. Um, when we did an audit there a number of years ago, we found that there was only one stroke unit in the country. Um, so we set about uh, organising the FAST campaign, which a lot of you have spoken about tonight and recognised as the advertising campaign to talk to people about how to recognise the effects of stroke. Uh, but what the Irish Heart Foundation was brought this into a wider campaign. So what we did was we worked with politicians, we worked with doctors, nurses, physicians, in terms of looking at improving services. And we set up the HSC National Stroke Programme, which are really responsible, and a number of the physicians who are speaking here tonight, in terms of improving stroke units around the country. You now have 21 around the country, which is fantastic. Also, there was a reduction in stroke deaths of 25%. Um, the FAST campaign was fantastic at raising awareness, of recognizing the signs of stroke, but also the Irish Heart Foundation ran grassroots campaigns around the country. So we went out to communities and we told them, lobby your local politicians during the elections and we would bring the messages of FAST and bring the messages of lack of stroke services to people in the community and we empowered them to then go out around the country and spread the FAST message both to their community but also to their local politicians. So this all really, really helped gather momentum for changing services uh, for people who have survived or have had a stroke. Unfortunately, there's still a lot more to do. Um, as mentioned uh, in the last year, we've had two reports. Uh, one was a fresh audit of stroke services, and the second was looking at stroke rehabilitation. So what happens after somebody has survived a stroke? Um, what we found is just 29% of patients are admitted to a stroke and there's huge age restrictions. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of stroke units are restricted by age limits. Um, also, 73% uh, uh, of hospitals can't provide recommended rehab standards, so a lot of um, what we're talking about this evening is rehabilitation is so important in the days and weeks following, and it really makes a difference on how somebody goes on and survives a stroke three years, five years down the road. The big shocker, though, is that this wonderful early supported discharge program, which you spoke about this evening, only 81% of rehabilitation hospitals have any access to that, have no access to that at all. Um, so that's very, very shocking. And as we were spe speaking about this evening, we are lobbying hard with politicians and the HSE in terms of building uh, momentum because there's really uh, both a moral and an economic case for, for that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so just to speak a little bit about, uh, more about our patient advocacy in the Irish Heart Foundation, based on these two reports, um, we held a lobby day on October 26th, so just last month. And uh, just before World Stroke Day, uh, we launched uh, these reports uh, to the media. So you may have seen there was quite a bit of talk about stroke uh, last month, just in terms of the national media, the regional media, um, covering the lack and the deficits in acute hospitals and in rehabilitation. Um, so we have to thank you, uh, the HSC National Stroke Team, for, for partnering with us on that. 
and for helping us find the research and, and find the statistics to bring that message out there. Um, but another group we really have to thank are the stroke survivors who came together from all across the country on October 26th. And these people had not only survived a stroke, um, but uh, they got on trains, they got on buses, they, they found a way to get to Jaw Aaron on October 26th. And they sat there for a couple of hours uh, listening to politicians and standing outside in the cold mirror taking photographs and all of it really really helps us to bring attention to the lack of stroke services and rehabilitation services around the country. So for an example the state pays over 400 million a year towards the cost of nursing home care for stroke patients and less than 7 million on rehab services that keep people at home. So that's a really stark statistic. So we have a really, really strong case, um, but it's actually about getting the politicians' attention because they're so busy and there's so many messages coming out of them that has been a hard number of years for people. Um, so the best way we can do that is to take all the statistics that we've talked about tonight and all the, the evidence uh, for improving and take the patients' voices and advocate them to politicians. So it was a really, really effective day for getting the politicians' attention. Um, so here's a couple of pictures from the day. Uh, we put together a number of campaigning materials for people um, who are travelling up. So we were able to do um, a number of uh, cards telling them what the deficits were in their counties. Um, so when they wet, met their local politicians, they were able to talk about, okay, this is my this is my county, Kerry. There's a lack of ESD in this area. Or if they were coming from Roscommon, we would have percentages in terms of stroke units and ESD there too. And we were able to kind of break down exactly what we were asking for from them. So they were able to meet with their local politicians and talk to them. And you'll see here a couple of photographs. We have uh, the HSC clinical lead for stroke, uh, Professor Harbison, with the head of advocacy, Chris Macy, and a couple of wonderful patients who helped us. There's two stroke survivors, Gillian and Jerry, who helped us kind of create media momentum on the day. And then the second photograph there, you see a number of politicians um, with a couple of people from, I think it's Wicklow um, there. So... Um, Let's move on and show you a big kind of group photograph there of everyone who was present on the day. So a number of cross-party cross politicians probably recognise a few faces. And uh, our head of advocacy, Chris Macy, but a number of the groups, as I said, the groups uh, from around the country who travelled up to be with us on that day. So it was a really, really important day for us. And uh, we're building momentum now again, uh, following up with those politicians who were there on the day and the ones who weren't. And... Uh, creating a case for stroke rehabilitation and early support of discharge, which you heard about tonight. Um, and then the other thing that we do in terms of patient advocacy in the Irish Heart Foundation is yes, we lobby the politicians and we try and get media coverage, uh, but the most important people are the patients, the people who have um, survived a stroke, the carers who are looking after people living with stroke. And so what we wanted to do was not just lobby for better health services, but we wanted to provide um, some sort of support in the community for people um, that would help maximise their quality of life once they've survived a stroke. And uh, the feedback we get again and again is people feel increasingly isolated once they've been discharged from hospital. They have nowhere to go, they've no, no one to talk to, and they really don't know uh, what happens next, where their journey is going to lead them. Um, so what we identified um, was this idea of stroke support groups and there's a number of stroke group uh, leaders in, in the uh, lecture theatre tonight and they do a wonderful, wonderful job in bringing people back to life and giving them that kind of support group in their community where they can make friends and talk to people and be themselves. So the Irish Heart Foundation research found a strong belief among survivors that support groups are crucial in getting their lives back on track. The evidence shows that weekly support groups are crucial in providing people the support they need. They provide a social outlet for people, they provide advice in terms of who to contact, and they also provide um, a range of activities and uh, things to do and places to go. So you'll see here they hold group discussions and chats which provide help, information, social outlet for stroke survivors. Um, Sometimes they have guest speakers, so um, if they might have some physiotherapists who have, hold an exercise class, or simply guest speakers from the area who might have um, an interesting experience that they would like to share. And what I would say is that each support group is, is very, very personal. Um, it depends on the members who attend. 
Um, so people um, might prefer to just have tea and coffee, or people might prefer to go on outings. But it's really our stroke group coordinators that are key. It's the people who lead those groups. Um, and they are really, really key to the community, and they do a lot, a lot of good work. We're lucky to have them. So there are just a couple of stroke group benefits for anybody who's interested in coming along. Um, our feedback that we get is that it really helps uh, self-confidence, reduces isolation and anxiety. It provides a forum where people can get vital information. And it also provides access to, as I said, phys physiotherapy or, or counselling. And if they can't provide it, they will tell you uh, places to go. So again, it's really about kind of talking to people and letting them know that they're not alone, that there are these uh, kind of outlets for coming together. And another thing that we have noticed by one of the support groups is that people um, can be quite young who have had strokes, unfortunately, and they find that sometimes the age um, of um, older settings can kind of put them off. So we're trying to, um, I suppose, begin younger support groups in 2017 as well, based on the feedback from people. So maybe even just a few kind of social outings or that kind of uh, fluid kind of group network in Ireland that people can turn to. So just a couple of member quotes there. Um, at the group meetings, we all help each other, and you see the improvement of people. Um, it's just great to know that I'm not the only one feeling this way. I find the exercise class really helpful, and it helps remind me to keep them up during the week. Um, so just to kind of close on this, um, everyone is welcome in our support groups. Unfortunately, we only have a small number of them running around the country. We're constantly trying to build them up. Um, so we welcome people contacting us and letting us know and um, we pass referrals on and if we know of a need in an area we'll try and kind of work with the local hospital and the local coordinators to build that up. Um, we've talked about asphasia which is uh, speech and communications difficulties whether hearing or speaking. Everyone is welcome and it's really just a, a liaison on our behalf with our team, team leader just to let people know um, who's coming along. And then just finally, just a couple of contact details. Um, our new website is irishheart.ie. It's going to be launched in the next couple of weeks. The, the other one is still there, but that's our new one, oh. irishheart.ie. Um, and if anyone wants to get in touch, um, the advocacy at irishheart.ie is uh, a really good email just to let us know if you're interested in joining our support groups. And most importantly, just to close on, um, we do have a helpline which is run by nurses. Um, and those nurses can answer any questions that anyone really has. If they don't want to get to a support group, but they just have some confidential questions they want to ask, the helpline is one 800 252 for anyone who's interested in giving a call. That's it. Thanks very much.